What is up everyone? My name is Josh Kinney and in this tutorial we'll be going over custom text fields inside of Swift UI. Let's go ahead and begin. So open up a brand new Xcode project. I have already created four files. One is login view, one is registration view, one is custom text fields, and then the other one is a custom secure text field. Um, and you'll see the difference in the two and why we have those later. Uh, but go ahead and set those up where you have these four files, and then we will start. Um, so first off, I am going to go to the login view, and I'm going to show you inside this login view, I have made a Z stack, and then inside the Z stack did color dot black, and I'll resume this so you can see. And then underneath that, I ignored safe area, so it would just give me a black background. You have to add the Z stack or you will not be able to change the background because if there's no Z stack in Swift UI, there's basically no stack on top. So you can't change the very, very bottom or the base. Uh, so that's why I did that. So let's go ahead and start by looking at this custom text field and seeing um, what we are going to do. So the first thing is we're going to get rid of this hello. Well, we're going to get rid of the um, canvas at the bottom on the custom fields because you don't it doesn't look very well in Swift UI uh, so we don't really need them uh, and you'll also see them in the login view anyways so um, there's that so go ahead and get rid of text and what we're going to do inside this is make a placeholder uh, so if there's no text in that text field we'll see a placeholder and you do that by simply adding a Z stack and inside the Z stack, we're going to do some logic and we're going to say, um, well, sorry, before we're doing that, we're jumping the gun. We're going to need a binding variable. And this is a question that I've kind of been asked a couple of times, uh, the difference in binding and state. I would definitely spend some time in doing a short video on that to show you guys a difference if you guys are still needing help with it so leave a comment below if you are and i'll make that my next video or next priority all right so we're going to make a binding uh, binding var and i'm just going to call it our our text goodness we'll make that of type string and then the next one we're going to need is an actual placeholder so let placeholder be of type text all right now since we made this a type text you'll see me probably make multiple mistakes because I always forget you have to wrap you can't just put a string you have to wrap each string with text um, which you'll see so in the Z stack now we want to go ahead and do if that our text dot is empty so if it's empty we want to go ahead and do something and what do we want to do? We want to grab that placeholder that we just created and then add a couple modifiers to it. So first off the foreground color, we're going to go ahead and add a color and then we're going to go ahead and do this dot init. And inside the init, just type in W and you'll see this white alpha. Uh, you can mess around with this. What um, I like for this though is a three and then a 0 0.87 for the alpha. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is add a little bit of padding. And then inside the padding, it's going to be a, a dot leading. And we're also going to add a little bit, um, we'll say 40. Okay, so that is the placeholder. So when there's nothing in our text, go ahead and add a placeholder. Okay, next thing, we're going to go ahead and go under this logic. And we're going to go build the H stack. And what this H stack is going to have inside the text field, you're going to have an image on the left side and then your text on the right side of that. So that's why you need an H stack. Um, H stack, and then we're going to start off with an image. And then we're going to do a system image. Or I'm sorry, yeah, a system image, but you'll need a system name. Now you can pass in a string here and it'll work just fine. However, we want this to be reusable. So we're going to come up here and make a let system image name of type string and then we're going to pass this in here so whenever we grab this custom text field we can add our own image to each of them which you'll see later um, and this one we're just going to pass in as a system image name and that is looking great now let's add a couple modifiers first one is we need a resizable so we can make it smaller um, or bigger 
The next one we're gonna do a scale to fit. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and make a frame. Now you can kind of judge your own frame. I'm going to make it a 20 by 20 uh, width and height because it's going to be sitting on that text field for whatever reason. If you got a big one, that's going to look weird. So you'll adjust that um, to whatever you would like or whatever works for you. Uh, 20 by 20 looks good to me though. Uh, last thing we're going to do is a foreground color and we're going to make this a dot white since we made the background black. I think that'll make that pop and look pretty good. Um, and then the last thing we're going to do is pass in now the text field. From there, it is going to need, as you can see here, a string and then a binding string. That's why we had to make this binding up here. Again, I'm not going to go over binding and state in this one, so keep it a little bit shorter. It's already going to be lengthy as it is. Uh, but if you do want to see a video of that, let me know in the comments and I will get to it. Uh, so this string, we're just going to pass in an empty string. And then the binding, we're going to pass in what we just created, which is our text. Um, and then underneath that, we are going to add a little bit. Uh, well, we'll come back to that. I'm, I'm going to show you a little, not a bug, but a way to clean up this code a little bit um, later. So we'll go back over here now to this login view and let's go underneath the color in the Z stack and let's add this. So we'll do a custom text field initialize and you'll see we have three things to add now. So we need the binding string. So to be able to talk to that, we need that state. So I'll make it a state variable now. Var, um, I'll name this. Um, this will be an email, so I'll do email. If I knew how to type, and then we'll make that of type string. Okay, so we'll pass an email there. And then the placeholder text, we'll just say enter your email. And then for your system image, now this is what I'm talking about. You can pass in whatever system image you want now that we uh, pass it in from that custom text field, which is pretty nice. So you don't have to keep the same image every single time. So this one will do an envelope. And now that we have that binding here, we're gonna need to add that here. So we're just gonna do an empty string. Uh, and let's go ahead and, oh, I told you earlier that I would mess up on this text part. Here we go. So you have to wrap this placeholder in text. And for whatever reason, I always forget to do it. That should do it. Cool. Let's hit resume and see what this looks like. And eh, it looks okay. First off, let's go back to this custom text field. And in this Z stack, let's make this an alignment of dot leading. And then let's make this H stack We'll put some spacing in here of 20. Okay, and then we'll go back to login view and that'll make it a little bit cleaner. Let's hit resume. Spacing, everything looks good, but we still need to add some things to it. So let's go ahead and add some padding. Let's add a background color. We'll do the same thing we just did a minute ago. We'll, we'll do that dot init. And then inside that init, we'll do a W and add that white alpha. And I'm going to pass in a 1 and then a 0 0.15 for the alpha. And let me go ahead and make this a little smaller for you guys. So the, te so the code looks a little cleaner. Okay, so we have from there, after the background, I'm going to add a corner radius. Um, what did I make? I made it of 10 and you can get rid of this. Just need the corner radius. And then the last thing I believe, oh, I added a padding of horizontal. And then I made a foreground color of white as well. So let's resume this real quick and see what it looks like. Great, that looks pretty nice. Now let's go ahead real quick and go over here to this custom text field and copy all this. So everything from binding to 
except for the struct. We'll go in and copy, go into the secure text. And you're like, wow, that's a lot of, you know, the same code we're using. Well, it is, but it isn't. So let's go ahead and paste it right here. And we're going to get rid of the system image name because when we're talking about um, a secure field, we want it to be the lock every single time. So there's no reason to put a new image. If you want it to be able to change the image, you can keep it the same. But I'm just going to type out lock so it shows that lock image every single time it's a secure field. Um, the next thing you want to do is since this is a secure field, you don't want it to be a text field, you want it to be a secure one. Or secure, sorry. Uh, and then the placeholder, we don't need a placeholder. It's gone. All we're going to need in this one. Oh, I lie. We do need a placeholder because it's still a text field. Take that back. So this, the placeholder is going to be the same there. Okay, so that should build that. Great. Now let's go ahead and go in this login view. And inside of this custom text field, we're going to go ahead and do a V stack to stack these guys on top of each other. And then inside here, we're going to add that new custom field. So custom, secure, text field. Now you'll see we only have two things of pace, our text, which, oop, let me show you that. It's a binding string, see that? So we need to add that here. Uh, so I'm gonna copy this email, paste it, and I'm gonna type in password, because that's what we're gonna use for this instant. instance. Um, password, and then inside here, we're gonna do dollar sign password, great. Placeholder text, we're gonna say, oop, I'm gonna wrap it. See, I always forget that, so text. Enter your password. You're gonna see that we need to add this binding property down here or this string property down here. And I'm gonna do the same thing where it's just empty. Now let's see what it looks like. It looks good, but we need to go ahead and make uh, some of these modifications to that as well. So use these modifiers here and I'm gonna use the same exact ones. Now, we know you're supposed to not repeat yourself. Uh, and we're repeating ourselves. It's exactly the same thing. And now it looks good. Uh, it looks really good. Now, one thing I would change real quick is up here in this V stack, I would go ahead and add some spacing of like 20, maybe 25, um, but just to give it a little bit of space. But it looks pretty good. However, you don't want to have to type this out every single time you do a custom secure field. So, the way we can handle this is copy this. These modifiers cut them out cut them out here and I'm gonna do a control or a command a and then a control I and that will go ahead and um, change up your code a little bit to make it look nicer go back into your custom text field and under the Z stack here you will see you can paste that there do the same thing in the secure field so go into the Z stack and paste that there. Now you think, hey, I got rid of it in two spots and I added it in two more spots. It's the same amount of code. Well, technically you're right, but throughout your app, like we're gonna see in the registration view when you use it four different times, it does save you code. Another thing inside this view now, look how small and clean this looks without all those modifiers there. Um, so you wanna keep that the view as, as lightweight and as least amount of code as possible and put that in other spots of your code. So let's go ahead and build just to verify that we put it in the right spot and everything looks great, which it does. And now let's go ahead and see what that looks like if we were gonna make a registration view. So, um, registration, we're going to go ahead and delete this. I don't know why I put that in here. Um, oh, I know why, because I'm looking at the preview. So up here, we got the color black, just like we're supposed to. And we're gonna do, we already know it's a V stack. We're gonna go ahead and add that spacing that we just did on the other one, spacing of 20. And then we're gonna go ahead and add them. So um, for this one, we're gonna need four state properties. My phone is just going off. First one is going to be a var of full name. 
full name and that's going to be a string and I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste it goodness four times and then I'm just going to change this so we're going to go full name then we're going to go username uh, actually we'll go email first just to break it up email username password from there we're gonna get rid of some of those spacings and we're gonna add inside this v stack actually first I'll go ahead and put empty 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 and then in this v stack we're gonna pass this so custom text field we'll go ahead and initialize it and we'll go ahead and copy this three more times because we're going to need three of those and then the last one's going to be the secure one one oops there's one there's two and then the third one's going to be a secure one and now let's start from the top do the dollar sign and that's going to be full name placeholder text make sure you do the text part and then we're going to say <clears throat> enter your and I'm going to go ahead and copy that full name And then your system image. What do we want for a full name? Let's just say person. I think that looks good and sounds good. Uh, binding, we're gonna go ahead for this next one and that's gonna be email up there. So email, text, enter your email. And then this, we're gonna do the envelope again. Third one is going to be your username, text, enter your username, and then <clears throat> we're going to do person again. Just makes sense. The last one, we're going to do the password, and this is the secure field, so um, I'll show you the difference in the two. Placeholder text. We're going to go ahead and say, oops, text. Enter your password. Okay, cool. So now let's go ahead and resume this and see what it looks like. Perfect. Now I'm going to hit play here. And you can see the difference in the secure field. So um, you can type this out. So let's just do Josh Kinney. Uh, enter your email, Josh Kinney at kinneycare.com. Uh, enter your username, J underscore Kinney. And then your password. Now watch this. Whenever you start typing, it hides it because it's a secure field. So that's the difference in the two. But here's the best part here. Even if you wanted to add a little space, the space is out a little bit, um, make it a little cleaner. You did all this now without any of those modifiers because they're all inside the text fields uh, or the custom text field uh, views. But you did all of that from line 21 to line 27. That is awesome. You did a whole view in less than 10 lines of code. So that's the power of SwiftUI, and that is how you make a custom text field um, and also a secure one. So hopefully that was beneficial. If you guys have questions, definitely leave those below in the comments. If this was beneficial, hit that like button. That bell will definitely give you some upcoming content that I'll put out. I try to do at least one video a week. And lastly, if you have not yet, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one.